Hey folks, in this video, we're taking you to a magical outdoor enthusiast's paradise. Fernie, British Columbia. That's right. But first, let's start at the beginning. That's a very good place to start. Yes, it is. Let's go. Hey folks. So we are here in North Port, Washington, just a few miles south of the Canadian border. We're on our way to Canada today. But the reason we're here stopped in North Port is for a very sad event. And I'm gonna show you what that is here. See this folks? This is a delicious stellar milk chocolate indica bar, THC from Albuquerque, New Mexico, our green leaf. They make the best THC chocolate anywhere. Love this stuff. I picked up a couple of these when we were in Albuquerque a few weeks ago. I also picked up this delicious bottle of tincture, which is also indica in uh, coconut oil. This is also delicious. There's still about three quarters of this bottle left, almost a half a chocolate bar left. And here's the sad event. I gotta throw this stuff away because we're about to go through the border crossing and we read today that you cannot take any form of THC or cannabis across the border in either direction, that it is quote unquote, a very serious offense. Anyway, here's my last bite of this delicious stuff from our green leaf. Hmm, that is so good. I'm about to toss it in a trash can. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness, what a shame. Hello, Canada. Here we come. After ditching the contraband, we crossed over into Canada at a place called Paterson, Patterson, British Columbia. And the crossing through the border did not go as easily as we had hoped it would. Well, first of all, they searched the van, which was not a problem. But the only thing they found was pepper spray. So I'm warning you to not take any weapons of any kind into Canada. No Including guns, pepper spray. pepper spray, because they will grab it. That's right. And secondly, um, the kind border guard notified me that I had been randomly selected to take a COVID test, which had to be taken within 24 hours. It's a one day COVID test. Not me though. Uh, not me, though. just just me. And uh, that did not go as easily as I had hoped easy, either. The complicated part was I had to set up an appointment, which happened to be a Microsoft Teams appointment. I don't have Microsoft Teams on my phone. I barely had a connection at one bar, had to download Microsoft Teams, had to set an appointment for later that day. Set up an account. Set up an account and then I couldn't get online. So the gentleman who is doing the appointment with me said, well, let's just do it over the phone. It's a monitor testing and he walked me through it over the phone. So if that weren't bad enough, that took quite a while. Then we had to take it to a place to drop off the test. We were told it was going to be really easy that you just take it to this particular pharmacy chain. I took it to one and they said, oh, we don't take those here. So we had to travel 30 kilometers north. How much place, is that? You tell me. I know what a 5K is. So it's five six times miles, six so is 18, is 18 miles. miles. Okay. I was getting pretty good at metrics when we were in Canada. So we had to travel 18 miles to Castlegar, British Columbia to drop off the test. So from the time we crossed the border to the time we were done with the COVID test was the first three hours of our trip. And believe me, I wasn't real happy about it because I'm not a real patient Not person. in a good mood at all. He no, not, not at all. So I think the whole testing thing that they have set up there, it's a good idea, but it's totally wonky and I don't think it works. So we got that over with, and our first night we boondocked at a place called Millennium Park in Castlegar. And in the morning, we walked this really nice trail through the park on the Columbia River. It was a beautiful park. There was a cool suspension bridge there, and the trail took us to a place in the park called Zuckerberg Island. There was a historic cemetery, and only two people were buried there, Alexander Zuckerberg and his wife, I don't know her name. And there was also a cool little Russian chapel house that uh, the Zuckerberg built there. Yeah. And next we went to this town called Nelson. It's this beautiful, very hilly town. It's right on the river. It's one of our favorite places in British Columbia. And there were a lot of really cool shops there and restaurants, outdoor cafes. There's some breweries. Wasn't that touristy? 
uh, the most important shops that are always required for van life on the road. Nelson is in a beautiful location on the banks of Kootenay Lake. Yeah, but the only problem is it's one of these old school towns that never has quite figured out how to utilize the waterfront. So from downtown, you can't even walk down to the waterfront, even though it's on this beautiful lake. What's there is a municipal airport, some industry, and Walmart. Walmart has prime real estate. Right on the banks of yeah. the lake. Now later that day, we crossed Kootenay Lake on the Kootenay Ferry, which goes from Balfour on the western shore of Kootenay Lake to Kootenay Bay, British Columbia on the eastern side. And there are beautiful views of the lake and towering mountains. It was almost like a fjord. Yeah, almost like a fjord, whatever a fjord is. And that night we boondocked in a beautiful pullout on Destiny Bay on the eastern shore of Kootenay Lake. In the morning we got up and we found this amazing trail called Wycliffe Buttes. It's south of Kimberley, British Columbia. It was a beautiful morning, really nice, easy trail. Climbed up to the top of a bluff and wonderful views of the Kootenay Valley. So it's a beautiful day where we are right now. It's really nice and warm. And I'm just wondering why you're wearing that interesting toque. I'm wearing this hat because it's a toque and Canadians <laughs> love hats. They have the kroners, they have the bucket cap like our friend Todd wears. And they wear hats like this, big hats because it's very cold up there. And she just got it yesterday, so she can't take it off yet. I love this hat. <laughs> and it goes well with your Sophia Loren glasses. Oh, thank you. That afternoon, we found an incredible place to boondock for the night on the Kootenay River in Skookumchuk. It was a really nice grassy spot, surreal blue mountain water. And there were stunning mountain views, and we saw a gorgeous sunset. Yeah, really beautiful yeah. sunset there on the Kootenay River. The next morning before reaching Fernie, we made a detour to Premier Lake Provincial Park at the base of the Premier Mountains. And Canada has provincial parks everywhere. And the Canadian provincial parks are akin to state parks here in the United States, with one exception. How much does it cost to get into a provincial park? They're free. They're free, unlike the exorbitant price, in my opinion, that most state parks charge now Not here even in the a United day States. Fee. Not even a day use fee. Yeah. yeah, so the provincial parks are awesome. Another thing to love about Canada. Yeah. And what did we stop at the lake for you to do? Oh, we stopped so I could paddleboard in the lake and it was beautiful. It was super clear water, like an emerald green, a lot to see underneath. There were turtles, there were fish. It was beautiful. I had a great time. So when we first went to Canada, we didn't really plan on staying that long, just dipping our toes in to say that we had been there maybe three days, something like that. But wow, it is so beautiful and such a wonderful place that we ended up spending two weeks. And in fact, I didn't plan on going to Fernie. But I did because I did my research and Fernie always comes up as one of the cutest towns in British Columbia. Yeah, but I had never even heard of it before, but obviously a lot of other people have. So Fernie has a very walkable business district. But the best part is... The location. The location, location, location. Yeah. Fernie's surrounded by the Lizard Mountain Range in the Canadian Rockies. And mountains dominate the scenery and are viewable from everywhere in town, especially Mount Fernie. You can also see Mount Bissaro, Three Sisters, Mount Proctor, and Mount Hosmer, among others. You can also see the Fernie Alpine Ski Resort at the southern end of town, and we'll talk about that shortly. And we'd stayed a month in the American Rockies, but the Canadian Rockies are whole different picture. Wow, they really are. Yeah, we They're stayed different. up near Leadville in Colorado for almost a month. And those 14ers up there are just incredible. Really impressive. The ones in the Canadian Rockies around Fernie, the Lizard Range, they're much, much lower, like 7,000, 8,000 feet, but they seem higher because they're a true Alpine mountain range. Just really impressive. 
And next to the Lizard Mountains and the beautiful views, the other best feature of Fernie is the Elk River. Oh yeah. The Elk River is crystal clear. It's clean water. It's super clean. And people are swimming and kayaking and tubing and fishing. Oh yeah, a lot of people fishing there. I watched them pull some big fish out of there. I didn't fish because I didn't have a Canadian license and I was too cheap to buy one. And Fernie is a lot like Crested Butte or Salida or Boulder. Everybody's outdoors all the time. Mountain biking, skiing, hiking. Everybody's outside. And another great thing about Fernie is that there's a lot of public access to the Elk River for these outdoor activities. And there's a beautiful walking path that goes all along the river and through town. However, unfortunately, most of it was closed for renovation when right. we were there. The city provides lots of other activities. There's an aquatic center. Which was closed when we were there. And a very cool bike park. With lots of hills and ramps. And of course, a lot of really sweet jumps. You ever take it off any sweet jumps? Next to the bike park is a decidedly less picturesque skate park. And of course, no great destination is complete without a beautiful set of links, all surrounded, of course, by incredible peaks and views. So after a long day of sightseeing, we decided to sample some of the local libations and we ended up at Fernie Brewing Company, which is just outside of town. So I had the Contour Cherry Ale. And I add the Caboose Red Ale. Uh. So what did you think of the Contour Cherry Ale? It was just okay. It really didn't taste like cherry. Yeah, I felt the same about the Caboose Red Ale. It didn't taste like cherry either. Mm -hmm. But then again, it wasn't supposed to. <laughs> it's an Irish red. But it was decent. It wasn't the best I've had, but it was decent. I would still suggest to try it out. And dogs aren't allowed on the deck, but they do provide a really nice little hangout. It was them. super cool. Charlie liked it. Charlie dug it. Yeah. So one of the things we like to do in a new place is explore the local food. And one of the foods Canadians apparently eat a lot of, which we'd never heard of before, is ketchup chips. We're gonna try them. Ah, here we go. Ooh, kind of ketchupy, right? Look in the bag. What does it look like? Ketchup chips. Ketchup chips. Be it honest. tastes like ketchup. These would be delicious, dipped in mustard. So why not just have mustard chips? I don't know, but I would love them because I love mustard. Yeah, mustard They'd be pretty good. Mustard chips sound pretty good, don't pretty they? Pretty good. And the ketchup chips had absolutely no ketchup in them. And I don't even think there were any natural ingredients other than uh, potatoes. But you know what? <laughs> we fell in love with them. We couldn't stop eating them. They were them. really good and they tasted like ketchup. We bought a couple bags. We of them did. On our trip. We did. They were good for a happy hour. So the next morning we headed out to the Montane Trails on Coal Creek Road. And there are tons of developed, well-marked trails for both summer and winter activities. Apparently all owned by Paristone Landmark Construction and Development Company which we'll talk about in a minute, but they've generously provided these trails to us for public access. And the trail was beautifully groomed. It had wild berries, Saskatoon berries. I'd never had those before, <laughs> but the mountain views were spectacular. The trails were well marked and there were lots of mountain bikers on yeah, the road also. Lots of mountain bikers out there, so be careful if you're hiking. So back to Paristone development. At the beginning of the trail, there are additional signs that are advertising Montane Fernie, which is a community being developed on this same land where all the trails are. The backside of the community is visible from all the trails and we had to see it. So we drove around and I have to say, wow. Mm -hmm. 
one of the nicest developments I've ever seen. And if I could afford it, I would love to live there. Very tasteful, beautiful. So after our hike and self-guided tour of Montaigne Fernie, we headed back into town to a place called Big Bang Bagels. I love bagels. And I had a toasted Asiago bagel with smoked salmon, sprouts, greens, and fresh tomato. Yum. It looked delicious. Yeah, it really was good. And I'm always on the lookout for a local cheese shop. And I found one called Le Grand Fromage. It's a cute little local cheese shop in Fernie, and it felt very French. Or Canadian. Or French Canadian. <laughs> or French Canadian. Hey, what'd you get? I was in a really cute cheese shop. It's called Le Grand Fromage. And what I bought, I bought this smoked salmon cheddar. It's nice. supposed to be a sharp cheddar. I also bought a terrine. It's duck l'orange terrine. Yummy. And the third thing I bought is British Columbia's most famous blue cheese. It's called Blue Benedictine. Awesome. It's upside down. It's upside down. So we had the cheese and terrine for lunch along with a sesame bagel from Big Bang Bagels. And uh, how was it? None of the cheeses really stood out. And I didn't think the terrine was that great either. Yeah, I mean, um, we were really excited about it. It was good, don't get me wrong, but it was not best cheese that we've ever no. had. Um, sorry to say, but still a really nice cheese shop. Go there, try it for yourself. Maybe we just got the wrong cheeses, I don't know. So after lunch, we headed three miles south of town to another mountain, Fernie Alpine Ski Resort. Now we were there in the summer, but apparently winter is the big draw here. Yeah, the owner of the cheese shop said that in the winter, the population of Fernie more than doubles. Um, winter is more popular than summer here. Yeah, and I could see why, because this was a really cool looking ski area. Now we're not skiers, but the signage showed that there are five bowls and a lot of trails, various difficulty, including quite a few black diamond and double diamond trails that looked really steep. Our friend Pete could do it. Katrina said he's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I guess Pete's pretty good. The complex includes the Cornerstone Lodge near the entrance with restaurant and shops and another Lizard Creek Lodge with restaurant and a heated pool. But the main draw here in the summer when we were there was mountain biking. Now this is something I had never seen before. People loading their bikes on the ski lift and riding down the mountain. Really fun. Yeah, if you're into mountain biking. It's pretty steep. Pete could do it. Pete could do it. Katrina said he's pretty good. He is, he is. He's good at everything. <laughs> so on the way back into town, we stopped at Earth's Own Naturals for some much needed supplies to replace those that I had to throw away before crossing the border. What kind of supplies? <laughs> the important kind. What did you get? What did I get? Well, I got, let's see, I got a Chowy Wowy, which is 10 milligrams of THC. It's hybrids, indica and sativa. Um, it's chocolate. I got a 10 milligram back 40, which is s'more flavor. And both of these combined were 10 bucks. Love legal pot so much cheaper than the old days. Thanks Canada for being so progressive, unlike a lot of other places that I know of. So the next morning we headed out to hike the trails on the other side of Coal Creek Road, and that's the Coal Creek Heritage Trail, which runs along an old railroad bed. It kind of starts out pretty flat, and then it splinters off onto ever steeper trails up the mountain. And there are lots of mountain bikers up here as well, so watch out. Yeah, exactly. But the top is just an alpine wonderland. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful.
Next, we headed to Mount Fernie Provincial Park. It's a beautiful park. It's clean, it's a well-kept campground, has flush toilets, hot showers, and it's just really, really pretty. Yeah, of course, it's Canada. It's Canada. <laughs> but we were there to check out the trails. And again, there were a lot of well-marked trails for biking and hiking. And I love the name of some of these trails. Stupid, Snakebite, and New Goat, Verboten, Stumpy, Brokeback, and S-Bomb. And my favorites, Fat Bastard, and Black Betty. I still love that song. It's a good one. <laughs> anyway, we took a short hike on the Lizard Creek Trail. Yeah, it's a really lovely little trail. And it's fitting for the end of day because I was still worn out from that morning hike on Cold Creek. Not me. <laughs> She's never worn out. I'm never out. worn out. And on our final morning, we sampled some more local fare, this time at a really cute French bakery called La Bonne Pan. It's a cute little bakery and makes delicious looking fresh bread and French pastries. But we were there for the wonderful light flaky croissants which we had for breakfast down by the river. It looks delicious. It looks delicious and flaky. I got a pain au chocolat. Chocolate croissant. Find some flaky on the outside. Nice pre-hike breakfast. It was a really great start to our final day in Fernie, which we spent most of just like a local. Just hanging out down by the river. We just chilled out, enjoying all the river has to offer. Charlie just loved it too. He doesn't really like to swim, but he likes going in up to his elbows. Yeah, this really is the life here in Fernie, folks. About 91 degrees on a hot August day. We came down to the river with all the locals and we're just kind of hanging out here by the river all day. Sitting here in Canada, drinking Canadian Club and ginger, and smoking Isla del Sol Maduro. Here's to Fernie, British Columbia folks. Just a fabulous place, you gotta come. Yeah, you really should visit Fernie, especially if you love all the exquisite beautiful, wonderful things that nature has to offer. Things like mountains, rivers, hiking, biking, skiing, and great local food and drink. All wrapped up in one really sweet little town. Fernie's a great town, eh? <laughs> we'll see you on the road. We'll see you on the road. <laughs>